today on The Flush. We chase America's original upland game bird in one of America's least likely places. Minnesota firebirds are in the air. But this Sharpie hunt has a few heartbreaking twists and an ending nobody could predict. Stick around. Presented by Federal Premium Ammunition and Pheasants Forever. Tucked in the far northwest corner of Minnesota, an upland bird hunter's paradise sits quiet. Their sharp-tailed grouse roam nearly untouched. Simply put, few hunters know they exist. Except for Matt Brewer, a local that's been crazy about the chuckle of the sharp-tailed grouse his whole life. This spot looks a little birdie, huh? Today I join him, chasing Minnesota's firebirds for the very first time. I don't think these birds stand much of a chance. <laughs> you, you think I'm over ammo? <laughs> well, I, I, I've seen you shoot. <laughs> Capping off our team, Bob St. Pierre a grouse lover with a brand new sidekick. This is Eski. Eski is six months old. She's a German short hair pointer. Then there's Gage, Benelli, and Trammel too. I think we got them ranging from six months old all the way up to 13 years old, so. A whole fleet of pointers ready to sniff the tail of a sharp-tailed grouse. <laughs> yeah. Are you ready, Eski? What are we gonna yell when one flushes? You can't yell rooster. Bird. Bird? The sharp tail numbers, dating way back, they were the most abundant bird native to Minnesota. And the numbers have had dwindled and dwindled and dwindled as farming became popular and settlers started to, to tear down habitat. And then uh, when CRP came back, the birds really started to make a comeback. And they got so high that the population no longer needed any help or uh, any controlling in, the, in this area. Where cover remains, Sharpies are thick. Nelly's on point right here. Bird, bird, shoot him. That's all. <laughs> yeah. We should have taken pokes at both of those. Really? Yep. All I know is I didn't shoot, and he looks at me and says, that's within range. You're gonna have to start shooting at that. You don't take shots like that, you might not get shots. Oh, man. They're fast, they're lightning fast, and you've got two seconds. If you don't take that shot, they're out of range. There, there were birds here. There were lots of birds here. I mean, that's fresh, fresh. Thistle is a big thing, because they'll get the clover around it, and then, uh, and then the willows. So those are the two main things we're looking for up here. Bird. Bird. Nice shot, Trav. Woo! If I went to bend in all these willows, I, I would have had a nice, easy shot. Oh, it was a chip shot. I was wondering if you're going to take it. I couldn't let it go. <laughs> Good job, Eski. So that's a nice adult. I could tell when it got up, I was about four feet from it. <laughs> See how there's no feather growth there at all. Yeah, so that's a male. Yep, so that'll turn bright purple when they dance. That was a good shot. I, didn't, I turned and it was already down. <laughs> I didn't even have a chance. This is my first Minnesota Sharpie. Feels good. Just holding it, I was kind of speechless. I didn't really know what to say. I mean, it was just really special. And this bird, I mean, this bird is just cool. When I think of Sharpies, I think, Wild West. I don't think of my home state of Minnesota. Hey, nice, nice flush. Nice work. Nice flush. We're off and running, but there is a big front coming through. Travis, that's what we call a prairie <laughs> storm. 
I want to hear some thunder out of my gun. Bird! That would have been fantastic. We had birds getting up 200, 300, 400 yards in front of us, but our object is obviously to get within 30, 40 yards if we can. There's one. The key is its habitat. As it is everywhere, the key is habitat. Matt, as any good guy does, doesn't bring you to the best spot first, right? He always saves that best spot for a little bit later in the day. He, he was telling us about this particular piece. He's hunted his whole life. It's got willows at the center. It's got grass around the edges. It is the mecca for these sharp tails here in, in Northwest Minnesota. The only problem, when we pull up, he just has this look on his face, like, just devastated. It's burned. It's black. Bushes have been pushed up. He was just here a week ago, and it was paradise. And now, it's gone. We took a moment just to kind of think about it, and we decided that even if there's nothing left in this piece, we have to walk it one last time. It is mid-October and the fall migration is peaking right now in northern Minnesota. But we're not thinking about ducks or geese. We're after a bird that very few people are chasing. Sharp-tailed grouse. Bird. Bird. We pulled up to one of my favorite pieces uh, to walk, one of my favorite sharp tail haunts, um, many memories there. It's scorched, it's been burned. It's been burned in the last two days. There's a bulldozer sitting on the edge of this section and it's obvious what's gonna happen. This is CRP that has expired and the habitat is on its way out. Some willows were still standing in this field. We thought, you know, Matt's hunted this his whole life. We've got to give it. We've got to give it. We owe it to Matt to walk this field one last chance and see what happens. What do you think, bud? You want to go sharp tail hunting? Let's go get him. Man, this just doesn't feel right, does it? No. <laughs> I feel like I'm marching to my death. History on this property has been good to Matt, yet we want one more memory before it's all done. This would be just too picture perfect if they came out here. Bird, 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 bird. It's the only piece left. About 30 of them got up on that side, but with three guys, I mean, you just can't cover it all. Exciting. walk over this little hill and you can see there's a different colored grass and it's a little bit thicker and Matt just has this look in his eyes like something good's gonna happen here. There's another one. Get him, Trav. Nice shot. Got him. <laughs> nice shooting, boys. It was a really special moment to me. I'm kind of speechless right now. I mean, that was a good flush. That was a really good flush. It's so bittersweet. You know, it's, it's the absolute perfect scenario for the hunt, but it's the last hunt, and that's what we're fighting. Probably look at this one for the rest of my life. As we're walking out, it was tough, but here comes the bulldozer, literally starts pushing willows that we're walking into at the end. It's, it's a bittersweet way to end that hunt. We absolutely have to work hand in hand with farmers. They are, they make the food that we all eat. I mean, I'm, I eat cornflakes, you know, I drive a, a SUV, I'm burning gas. I get it. You know, those, those memories that you make with your dogs, that you make with your friend, you made with your dad, and all of a sudden, that field no longer exists. On a personal level, it's heartbreaking. I know that's the last time 
I'll probably ever get to shoot a sharp tail out of that field. That moment, the three of us standing there holding those birds, this hunt could have ended right there, but we're at the beginning of this trip and there's so much left for us to chase. A new day blows in winds of change. Today <coughs> is a lot different than yesterday. We had like 65 degrees sunny. What are we at today? Maybe 40 and windy? <laughs> <laughs> and it's bone chilling. Yeah. <laughs> but the dogs are ready no matter what the temperature. See if we can't get Eski her first Sharpie point. Meet Eski, six month old German short haired pointer named after Bob's hometown of Escanaba, Michigan. Eski is a finesse dog, learning quickly by following the path of Bob's eldest pointer, Trammel. Let's go! That was a pretty point. Yeah, it was. That was gorgeous. All right, it's my turn, fellas. In spite of habitat change and Minnesota's brutal winters, these sharp-tailed grouse adapt, giving hunters like us a sight we never saw coming. Here goes one. He was a long ways out. <laughs> They've got my number. Tomorrow morning, we get after a bird of a different feather. In Thief River Falls, Minnesota, the migration is heating up. Nelly's on point right here. We're in Northwest Minnesota chasing sharp-tailed grouse, and we just finished one of the most bittersweet hunts I've ever been a part of. There's another one. Get him, Trav. Nice shot. Got him. <laughs> Sharp tails are one thing, but Matt pretty much chases everything that this country has to offer. We found a field completely loaded with cranes. We got the last weekend of crane season, so we might have to get after those tomorrow. He's like, guys, we're getting up early. I've got blinds. We're going after cranes. We wanted to be there before first light. So we're set up in what was a winter wheat field and it's already been worked up once and only about six miles total flight from where the birds are probably roosting. The difficulty in hunting cranes is that they have really good eyesight. They're very smart birds. They have tremendous eyesight. They don't decoy well. We're running out of time here. Birds should be flying soon, so we're gonna keep raking. We quickly stuff our blinds, trying our best to disappear into wheat stubble only three inches tall. Hopefully, we'll fool their eyes. Morning flight begins at sunrise. Once I shot my first one and watched it fall, and then actually got to examine the bird up close and then taste it, it, it changed the game for me. If I could do anything, it'd be grouse hunt, maybe take a nap, and hunt sandhill cranes. They, they just have my heart. There's, there's two lines to the left of the farmhouse. There's one to the right. We're, we're laying in the vines, we're all pumped. The only problem is they flare at the last second. Why don't they want to come down, man? Cranes have incredible eyesight. And this flock just picked us apart. We're hunting in a field with, with grass stubble about that tall, and we've got blinds that sit up about this high. I almost think we should have gone back to the old days of trying to bury ourselves in the dirt and making ourselves uh, even a little more low profiled. Despite the fact that they wanted to be there all week, they, I, I think they just saw us. The first flock will probably determine your success for the day. Every flock after just went to the same exact spot. You know their nicknames, right? They got two nicknames, Ribeye of the Sky yeah. and uh, Flying Filet. The way we're hunting today, though, we're going to have to buy one in the store if we're going to find out. We definitely saw a lot of birds, and it was, it was a lot of fun, even though we didn't bring any down.
Across the field, a flock of Sharpies catch our eye, and we quickly forget about the cranes that got away. After all, we're here to flush Minnesota's sharp-tailed grouse, and that's just what we're gonna do. Esky's gonna do sweet things here, I can feel it. One last hunt. Let's do it. I'm gonna shoot straight this time, too. Down tight. We're gonna finish just the way we started. Strong. Nice Bob! Woo! Good shot, Bob! <laughs> hey, what's that on my back? <laughs> oh, it's the monkey that just left. <laughs> All right, it was like a, just a no doubt, just a perfect shot. Yesterday's misses now become a distant memory. After two days, Bob's on the board, and we are determined to end this Sharpie hunt strong. If only we knew the life-changing moment that was to come. Walking a grouse field during Minnesota's fall migration now holds a special place in my heart. Same can be said for Matt Brewer and Bob St. Pierre. It's Minnesota that we three call home. Hunting grouse on our home turf, a yearly tradition we keep, just not Sharpies. Few hunters know they exist here, even fewer have ever walked these fields to hunt them. This is my first time. Yet over the past two days, we flushed more Sharpies than we can count, from cover thick, thin, and even burnt. I always have a saying, Deep River never disappoints. Try them on point ahead of me. Bird. Goes one. Man, they're fast. That is what you call a give me shot. We have been flushing birds in every single piece of grass that we've hunted. Matt clearly knows what he's doing up here. And word is spreading that, uh, that the birds are up here and, and that it's a, a good area to go. And part of me says, yes, I'd like to keep it to myself, but uh, there's, a, there's a much bigger picture. And the more people come up and, and hunt them, hopefully the more people find a respect for the sharp tail. And, and maybe join the sharp tail grouse society or you know, join pheasants forever and, and start to realize that conservation works. Will this sharp tail population continue to thrive against a changing landscape? Only time will tell. Go find them For now, we follow eagerly behind four German short hair pointers like a well-oiled, well, <laughs> like a well-oiled grouse missing machine. There goes one. There goes two more. These birds are fast. If you don't get that shot out in two, maybe three seconds, goodbye. Love watching the dogs work and, you know, despite some poor shooting um, from everyone, you know, the dogs kind of look back at you like really disappointed in you, but it's still so cool watching them work. Fortunately, Matt's dogs have seen a few misses over the years. Here's Gage, the old man of our group. He's 13 years old, sniffing with the best nose of these four pointers. He's a patient hunter, always keeping within Matt's range. On this hunt, he's battling a thyroid disease. It slows him down, but it won't keep him from flushing the bird he loves most. He still does well. He's a great dog, great nose, very patient hunter. Then there's Benelli. She runs fast, she hunts hard. She's a great dog. We hunt behind these four bird dogs, knowing we're no good without them. Oh, he saved us. Well, we, we sure look foolish on that one. Got up right in front of us, and he happened to be next in line. Good job. Gage was tight on that. To watch my, my old man, watch him point and creep on, on a pair, it was really cool, so. Look at you, Mr. Hot Shot. It's amazing what Saturday does to you. Hey, nice shot. Put Thank the you. Wiffle ball. This has been an amazing hunt. Should we call it? It's hard to call it, but it's the right thing to do. We, we can end on a high note, a point like that. Look at that. That's why they got their name. Shark tail. Beautiful. This is a place I'm coming back. I just hope there's CRP on the ground here next time I come. Camel. Okay,
I love you. Yeah, very good. I love you. Oh, thank you. I love you too. I love you too. <laughs> heaven indeed. As we walk out of this field, heaven becomes a sad reality. We didn't know it that day, but Gage and Benelli had hunted here for the last time. A few days later, Matt's dogs both passed away. Age had finally caught up to them. As we look back, there's no way we could have predicted how this would end. Perhaps we must know that every flush is a gift we cannot take for granted. And whether we leave with bird in hand, the memories are sure to last a lifetime.